Hello everyone. Well, this is the seventh and final episode of my 2023 diorama building series. In this video, I will show you all the detail I added to complete the scene. First, I design and 3D print a sign for the forge. After assembling it, I added an axe planted on the supporting beam to give it a touch of fantasy. To emphasize the diorama scene concept, I named the blacksmith building the Dragon Bane Forge. I carefully positioned the sign on the wall to check for any interference. To model the sign at the exact scale I wanted, I turned to Inventor software again. I used miniature chain to hang the sign from the beam that will be attached to the building. It was a small detail, but it made all the difference in the end result. Lastly, I named the other buildings the Antic Attic and the Drunken Wyrm Inn. I wanted to stay on them and I went with the word Wyrm as it's a synonym of dragon. I've also designed a wagon to the right dimension for our hero, the Brave Donkey. It's important to give credit where it's due, and Donkey is certainly the star of the story. Not only does he carry the trophy, but he also served as bait to attract the cattle eater. To create the log, I repurposed a failed 3D printed tree. The axe is an alternate weapon that was included in Ripper Miniatures Dorin the Dwarf Fighter Blister. To make the diorama scene more realistic, I used super glue to fix a mix of three colored lichen on the roof of the buildings. This helps to hide the gap between the section of the forge roof. I also glue lichen at a few places on the roof where the shingle is torn off and the roof has been repaired. This adds an extra layer of detail to the scene, make it feel more authentic and immersive. After the glue dries, I use a large brush to carefully remove any excess lichen, ensuring that the final result is both stunning and realistic. To ensure a seamless appearance between the two parts of the roof, I add more lichen. I also trim and glue tuff of grass to the roof, adding more texture and depth. Next, I attach lichen to various spots on the wall, creating a more natural and organic look. It's finally time to attach the sign to the wall of the forge. Before I do that, I take a moment to carefully consider where to place the beam that support the sign. I carefully drill a hole to insert the end of a paper clip which is already glued to the beam supporting the sign. Before gluing the beam, I make sure everything will line up perfectly. Precision is key here. To ensure a strong, long-lasting bound, I'm using super glue again. This will keep the sign securely in place. Voila, the sign is now attached to the building. Doesn't it give the forge so much character? I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, let's add some lichen to the roof and walls of the inn. Using the same technique as before, I apply the glue and carefully attach the lichen to the surface. I remove the excess lichen with a brush to give it a more natural look. 
And there you have it. The hint looks even more charming now. I make sure to recover as much lichen as possible after each application. Now it's time to figure out the best spot for the inn's sign. There are several options that catch my eye. After careful consideration, I decide to install the sign at the top, near the ridge of the roof, where it will be easily visible. Once the glue has dry, I notice white marks on the beams, so I paint them to blend in. Next, it's time to choose the perfect spot for the sign on the merchant house. I absolutely love the design of this sign, it's eye-catching. I decide to glue the sign there because I don't want to obstruct the view on the stained glass window on the other side of the building. I carefully position the beam in place. Next I drill a hole to insert the end of a paper clip which is already glued to the beam. I had to make a notch on the beam to get it lined up perfectly. To ensure a strong bound, I used super glue once again. And there you have it, a beautifully attached sign. Then, to add even more life to the scene, I went ahead and added more vegetation. Finally, it's time to install all the figurines and decorative elements. With 30 figurines and plenty of decoration, this will be a true fest for the eye. But wait, there is more. As a secondary point of interest, there is a rust monster feasting on the blacksmith iron reserve, while everyone is focused on the hero's arrival. To add more depth and texture to the scene, Stain the ground behind the forge with Ripper MSP Rust Red Paint and Seraphim Sepia Shade from Citadel. Next, I place rusted iron ingots on the ground. 
I made these with pieces of plastic sprues. And last but not least, I placed the oxidation beast near the cave entrance, ready to cause damage. Look at that rust monster. He seems like he's really enjoying the blacksmith iron reserve. To add more detail and realism to the scene, I decided to create a climbing sapling using roots. I carefully positioned the root at the back of the forge shed and shaped them to look like natural climbing plants. To make the sapling look even more realistic, I had smaller roots to create secondary branches. I secured the root in place using super glue and then I used synthetic foam to reinforce the structure. For the final touch, I attach moss to the trunk of the sapling, giving it a more organic feel. To add foliage to the branches, I use a realistic looking foliage from Woodland Scenics. I carefully place and glue the foliage to the branches, bringing more greenery to the scene. But why stop there? Let's add some colorful flower using small clumps of foliage from Woodland Scenics. They're easy to glue onto the greenery. Now that the shrub is complete, I place it against the wall of the shed for a more organic look. And because more is always better when it comes to nature, let's add some more foliage and flowers. Now it's time to add the finishing touch by arranging the decorative elements around the forge. We can't forget about the townhouse. Let's add some decoration there too. And last but not least, I'll add some elements near the merchant house. Just like the four buildings, these amazing grocery supplies are from Tabletop World. A neat trick I use to conceal the base of the figurine is simply to apply a thin layer of fine sand around the base of the models. I also apply some on the diorama base to help blend the color of the ground. I repeat this step for each figurine after placing them on the diorama. Although I incorporated some 3D printed elements, the majority of the furniture inside the buildings are from Tabletop World. Their amazing products provide the perfect touch to bring the diorama to life. In conclusion, I must also mention that all the figurines are from Ripper Miniature. It's been a pleasure to share this video series with you. If you've enjoyed it, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more tutorial on painting and creating dioramas. Before wrapping up, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the entire Tabletop World team for organizing such an inspiring contest. It was truly motivating and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have participated. I'm already looking forward for next year's contest and have some exciting idea brewing 
for my next project. Finally, I'd like to add that I titled this diorama Return of the Heroes. If you're interested in prose, I've composed a poem related to the diorama scene. It's in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone and as always, keep on painting and take care.